Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. As you guys saw by the title, I will be reading my subscribers' spooky stories. So grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. Hi, my name is Lali. I've been binge watching all your spooky stories for about a week now, lol, and I just have to share my experience. Thank you so much, Lali. My story may be a bit long, but it's definitely worth the read as it all connects to one thing. Las Brujas de Juventino Rosas, Guanajuato. Let me give you some backstory. I am from the US, but I am very connected to my roots in Mexico. The pueblito my family and I are from is Juventino Rosas, Guanajuato. And it is known for the brujas that live there. When I was 16, during a vacation in Juventino, I left my home and joined my now husband. We lived with his family for a while, but eventually moved into my parents' home once they returned to the U.S. I never felt anything negative there other than normal jitters as I am a very easily spooked person. Around three months after moving in, I became pregnant, although I was unaware of it at the time of the first incident. My husband and I were both asleep, and due to the heat, we would leave the windows open at night, and I always slept facing the window. At around 3 a.m., my husband awoke to the piercing screech of a lechuza right outside the window. When he turned to look, it was staring straight at me. He was paralyzed with fear and just laid there watching it for 15 minutes as it gazed at me, sleeping, until it finally flew away. After that experience, I started feeling very depressed and drained. We found out I was pregnant about a week later, so we just chalked up what I was feeling to the toll pregnancy was taking on my body. However, after a month, I couldn't handle it anymore, and I decided to go back to the US for a while. As soon as I got away from there, I instantly felt better. It was like a switch had turned on inside me, and I no longer felt anything of what I had experienced during that past month. When I was around seven months pregnant, I decided to go back to Mexico to visit my husband and spend time with him before I delivered. It so happened that it was the month of October. Big mistake. I had no idea I was about to experience one of the most terrifying incidents yet. We were staying with my suegra for most of my visit, but her house was located on the outskirts of the pueblo with no cell service and no Wi-Fi. Since I was still attending online classes, I had to get some work done. So we decided to spend one night at his aunt's house, which was closer to the heart of the pueblo and had Wi-Fi as well. The house? gave me bad vibes and felt spooky, but I just brushed it off. The room where we were going to sleep in was the one room no one wanted to stay in. Not even their dog would go into the room. Well, we laid down for bed and fell asleep. And around 3 a.m., I woke up my husband so that he could accompany me to the restroom. On our way there, I noticed that his cousin's bedroom door was closed and his aunt's door was wide open but I didn't look inside. After finishing in the restroom, we returned to the room and laid down. As I laid there, a very powerful feeling of dread, fear, hopelessness, and dark negativity consumed me. It felt like that already dark room got even darker. I felt so overwhelmed that I decided to play a rosary on my phone, but the Wi-Fi stopped working. Panic began to set in because that horrible feeling was getting worse by the second. At that moment, my husband turned to face me and instantly asked, ¿Tú también sientes eso? Do you feel that too? He looked so afraid and I lost it. I started crying and begging for the consuming negativity to leave me alone. Suddenly, the doorknob started shaking aggressively. We could see the light under the door getting brighter and brighter, almost feeling hot. I couldn't take it anymore. I grabbed my phone and called my husband's cousin, crying, and she rushed to the room to see what had happened. When she arrived, we told her everything, and she instantly believed us. Just then, 
Her mom walked in and said, Ya le dije que se fuera. I told her to leave. Backstory. I won't dwell too deeply into it because this is not my story to tell. My husband's aunt had been possessed before. It was a severe ordeal that required an exorcism to get her back. But she was left with a gift. She can see and communicate with beings that are no longer here, among other things. I have my personal feelings about that situation and her. So when she walked into the room and said that, I felt really scared of her. No one had called her and we were speaking barely above a whisper. So how could she have known what was happening? Well, the moment she uttered those words, my daughter started moving around and I realized she had not moved at all up until my husband's aunt walked into the room. Finally, she explained to us that behind her home lived a witch and that the witch had felt my baby's energy and wanted it. That's when my husband's aunt confronted it and ordered it to leave, making it clear that it wasn't going to get what it wanted. My husband later told me that when we had walked past her room, he saw her sitting up in her bed, talking to someone, and that her eyes glowed red. Needless to say, I left the pueblo soon after that, fearing for the safety of myself and my baby. Fast forward to when my baby was around six months old, my family and I decided it was time to baptize her and for my husband to finally meet her. So we made the trip to Mexico and everything was fine until one night when the activity started up again. For context, my bed is tall, probably about four feet above the ground. We would sleep sideways to fit comfortably and my husband and I made sure our feet would be in contact at the middle of the mattress to prevent our daughter from accidentally falling. At that point, my daughter wasn't crawling yet and she had always been an easy baby when it came to sleeping so she would sleep through the night. I woke up around 5 a.m. and realized my baby was not on the bed with us. I looked towards our feet and sure enough, they were positioned exactly as we had arranged them. There was no way she could have gone over them without us feeling her. And again, she wasn't crawling yet. I instantly woke up my husband and we got up and started looking everywhere for my baby. I found her laying on the ground, awake, but not really doing anything, just laying there. I quickly scooped her up and began checking her body for any injuries, but there was nothing. Then I realized she wasn't even crying, so she couldn't have fallen. The floor was just cement as it had never been floored, so if she had fallen, she definitely would have gotten hurt. The next night, we decided to place the mattress on the floor and I lined up all the pillows in a way that if she were to fall, she would land on a pillow. I had a hard time sleeping that night, but finally, I fell asleep. When I woke up again, my baby was not on the bed. This time, she was on the floor, perfectly placed by my husband's head, and she was asleep. Once I grabbed her and checked on her, I realized that all the pillows I had placed down were untouched and unmoved. The next day, my baby was baptized and we never had any experiences like those again. My family and I strongly believe that the witches of Juventino Rosas tried to take my baby and that they wanted her from the moment I became pregnant. I still feel very uneasy when I remember these incidents and I hope to never have to experience anything like this again. This incident took place in August 2022. I usually worked morning shifts, but on this day, my supervisor called asking me if I could cover a shift for an employee who had called out sick. I was in the process of saving money, so I agreed to work that night. I finished the shift around 1 a.m. and began driving to my babysitter's house to pick up my son. This particular night, I was extremely tired. The person who was caring for my son offered to let me stay the night in one of the bedrooms. The house is not very large, 
It has three bedrooms and is about 1100 square feet. I headed to the room that was straight down the hallway and proceeded to get ready for bed. I usually sleep with a fan on, so I turned on the ceiling fan even though it was crookedly hanging loose off the ceiling and made a clinky sound. I was too tired to pay it any mind, so I didn't let the noise bother me. I turned off the light and quickly dozed off to sleep. Soon after falling asleep, I began to dream about being in the same exact room, except it was daylight and the room was well lit. I began to focus my attention on the end of the bed as I could hear some sort of growling noise coming from that area. I noticed a person in a crouched position moving closer to the edge of the bed. Upon closer examination, I recognized this person in real life. She was a woman who didn't have a very good reputation. She was very unstable and had issues with the law and was known to use illicit substances. Around this time, she was in her mid-40s, but she looked much older in person. However, in this nightmarish dream, she looked even more decrepit. To give some details, her skin was a gray color, her face was full of wrinkles, and her body was covered in blisters and large open sores. Her hair was disheveled, matted, and dirty. Her teeth were broken, and they were stained a yellowish-brown color. She was just an overall horrible sight to see. She angrily crawled onto the bed, climbed on top of my chest, and grabbed onto my neck. She began to strangle me with so much force that my body began jolting in an upward and downward motion. I noticed that my eyes suddenly began to open, and I could see the dark room I was in. I was no longer asleep. However, I could feel hands around my neck and my body was still violently jolting up and down on the bed by an invisible force. I could hear the clinky sounds of the fan and see the ceiling fan spinning around. I had absolutely no control of my body or what was happening to me. I tried to speak, but I couldn't move my mouth and I could barely utter a sound. I began to repeatedly mutter the name Jesus as best as I could and eventually the attack stopped. Whatever was strangling me had let go and left the room. I sat up in the bed shaken and confused as to what had just happened. Once I gathered enough strength, I got out of bed and turned on the light. I proceeded to pray and cover myself with the blood of Jesus before laying back down. I slept with the lights on for the rest of the night. About a year after this ordeal, the woman from my nightmare passed away from a suspected drug overdose. I'm not exactly sure why I had this experience or why I saw this person in a grotesque form. Sometimes I can't help but wonder if maybe I was supposed to warn her about the choices she was making and how she needed to do better. If anyone else has had an experience similar to this, I would love to hear about it in the comments. I will share this experience because it is one of the most intense encounters I have had. Before I delve into this story, I want to emphasize that I always seek rational explanations and don't readily jump to supernatural conclusions. I often consider factors like pipelines or faulty electrical connections in a home. However, the following experience remains one of the strangest things that has happened to me in my life. So, let's begin. This experience occurred at my uncle's house back in 2001. A little backstory to provide more clarity about my experiences. I grew up in San Francisco, and after graduating from high school, I decided to move to a small town where my dad's family lives. This town was three hours south of San Francisco and had a population of 70,000. It was a nice change to the big city life I had for 14 years prior. When I finally made the move, I went over to my uncle's house and asked if I could speak to him briefly. He said sure and motioned for us to move to the little table next to the kitchen to sit down and talk. I asked him if I could move with him and auntie for a while as I attended community college. 
adding that I didn't like living alone in a new town I had just moved to. He replied, I think that will be fine. I expressed my gratitude and assured him that if he needed any help around the house, he could let me know. I then left to gather my belongings and in a few hours, I returned bringing only what I needed. Clothes, my books, toothbrush, and some CDs. Almost immediately, I sensed a vibe as if someone else was in the home, even though it was just my uncle and me at the time. It felt like when you go to a friend's house for a party and there are people walking around. It wasn't necessarily a bad feeling, but it definitely caught my attention. One day, I saw my uncle doing beadwork at the table while listening to a radio talk show. I asked if I could sit with him and listen, to which he replied, sure, come and sit. As we sat there, I gathered the courage to share something with him, admitting that I hoped he wouldn't think I was weird. He encouraged me to speak up saying, go ahead, tell me. So I opened up about the feeling I had on the first day I moved into his house. The sensation of there being a vibe of other people present in the home, even though it was just him and me at the time. To which he replied, you know, I'll tell you this, all the years that I have lived here, I have had some experiences that I couldn't explain. It didn't scare me much, but I definitely noticed them. I was watching the History Channel by myself in the house. It was close to 9 p.m. and your auntie wasn't home yet from her late shift at the hospital. I was in my recliner and behind me in the kitchen, I heard the drawers and cabinets. When I went to turn on the kitchen lights, a few of the drawers and cabinets were open all the way. So, I believe you. I don't think you're weird or anything. Well, a few months later, I had my own experience. When it happened, I was the only one in the home as my uncle and auntie were out for a while. My cousin Mary, my uncle's daughter, was away attending her first year at the university. So I was given her room by my uncle when I moved in. Well, one night, I was walking down the hallway leading to this room. It was pitch black as it usually was. Being my uncle's house, it was far out in the country and the last house on the block next to a field. There were also barely any street lights to shine inward toward the home. I turned to the right down the hallway leading to my new room. By this time, I had grown used to walking into the center of the room to pull the long string tied to the ceiling fan to turn on the light bulb. As I was feeling around in the dark for the string, suddenly, I saw something darker than the pitch black room come toward me. Of course, initially, I thought it was a person. However, while it was pushing me, I knew it wasn't human because it didn't have the characteristics of a human's arm and body. What would be this thing's arms and hands felt much bigger. And where the fingers would be, I would compare it to something like paws, but without the nails and claws. Whatever this thing was, I felt this thing go through me the whole time it was pushing me. After the pushing stopped, I was finally able to see out of my left eye again. To my surprise, I found myself completely outside of the bathroom. I just couldn't believe it. I was shocked and didn't understand what had happened. When I looked at how far I was pushed out of the room from where my ceiling fan was to where I found myself, it was a total distance of about eight feet. Whenever I look back on this experience, it is still one of the strangest that I have had in my life. Hi Daisy, my name is Julie. One night, I was sleeping in the room with my mom when I suddenly felt the urge to wake up. For some reason, I sensed that something or someone was staring at me. When I opened my eyes, I shifted my gaze towards the wide open bedroom door and I saw what appeared to be an old man staring right at me. He had white hair and was wearing a blue button up flannel with light blue wash jeans and boots that resembled Timberlands. I didn't know what to think. 
Could it be an intruder? Could it be a ghost? I do ask that nobody listening to this judges, but my dad was really in and out of my life growing up. And there were times when he was around and would stay with us. However, since it was just my mom, sister, and I at the house that night, I was afraid of what this being was capable of, whether he was alive or not. I did think about throwing my stuffed animal at him to see if he would disappear, but I didn't want to make him angry. You might be thinking, why didn't you tell your mom? You see, I could've, but in my head, I was afraid of what he could've done to my family or me if I said anything. So I just stared at him for a while longer before I decided to shut my eyes tight, hoping and praying he wasn't real and would just disappear. The moment I closed my eyes, I felt my mom get up and walk towards the bathroom. And in order to get to the bathroom, you have to pass that bedroom door. As I opened my eyes, I saw that the old man was no longer standing there. He was gone. I continued to stare at the door until my mom returned and laid back down. So once she was in bed, I opened my eyes and glanced at the bedroom door once more, only to find this old man standing there again. At this point, I was aware it was a spirit, but I just let it go because my mom had always told me, no le tengas miedo a los muertos, que ellos no te pueden hacer nada. Tenle más miedo a los vivos, que ellos sí te pueden hacer algo. Well, the next morning, I told my mom what I saw that night. She looked at me and said, te creo. Once, when your dad stayed here, he told me that he woke up and saw the same man standing at the bedroom door. My heart sank to my feet. My dad had never mentioned this to me, so for him to have seen the same thing as me was extremely shocking. I never saw the old man again. Thank God, but it was a truly shocking experience. So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and sharing in your spooky stories. I know sometimes it could be hard even reliving these traumatic experiences, but you guys share them and I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. If you have a spooky story, don't hesitate to share your story. It could be short, it could be long, but does not matter. We love to hear it. So please send them our way at daisyspooks at gmail.com. I'll leave that in the description box just in case you guys want to send in yours. But other than that, los quiero mucho. I hope you guys are doing amazing wherever you are at in this world. Los quiero. And I hope to see you guys all in my next one. Bye.